Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where travelers are one stop away from world destinations. Connections on Delta Airlines to Atlanta are available daily. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. One of Bloomington Normal's largest employers is making plans for a higher tariff environment as Donald Trump heads back to the White House. It's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Monday, November 11th. I'm Ryan Denham, and this is WGLT's The Leadoff. Now let's lead off with the campaign promises of President-elect Donald Trump, which have many businesses scrambling to figure out how to adjust to a higher tariff environment. WGLT's Charlie Schlenker reports Bloomington Normal's largest manufacturer is one of them. The electric vehicle maker Rivian is getting ready to launch its new R2 vehicle in 2026. It's building an addition to the plant in Normal. It's signing deals now to make sure all the many parts of the vehicle will flow steadily from around the world to Normal when production begins. Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe acknowledges to analysts in the third quarter earnings conference call that the Trump approach to trade is going to be a lot different than during the Biden administration. There's a lot of policy elements here that are in play and we're watching it very closely. With sources for 85 percent of the R2 already nailed down, analysts want to know how tariffs might change the cost structure for the new vehicle. Scaringe says Rivian anticipated the issue some time ago. A lot of uh, our focus has been on sourcing suppliers that are not going to be subject to you know, large tariffs. Not every piece of the new R2 will be able to evade tariffs. Scaringe says Rivian is trying to hedge on those. In places where we have source suppliers that are overseas that could be subject to, to changes in tariff structure, designed the contracts and designed the relationships in such a way that we're not carrying much of the risk. There's still a lot of uncertainty, and Scaringe says it's not just in finished parts. What's going to be interesting is, is how far this reaches into the upstream supply chain. So as we think about raw materials, uh, and that's, you know, that's something that you know, every manufacturer, certainly ourselves included, are, are thinking about. It's also possible tax incentives to buy electric vehicles will disappear in an administration that has given signals it wants to preserve the fossil fuel industry. Rivian Chief Financial Officer Claire McDonough says so far Rivian's vehicles are at a price and most buyers are at an income level that prevent them from capturing all of the existing credits anyway. And when Rivian does introduce lower-cost EVs for mid-market, R.J. Scaringe says at the end of the day, what will convince motorists to convert from gas-powered vehicles to EVs is variety, choice, driving experience, and the features of the vehicles. Scaringe says Rivian will continue to compete well on those fronts. For the leadoff, I'm Charlie Schlenker. Here are some other stories we're following in the WGLT newsroom. Senator Dick Durbin says he hopes the new Republican majority in the Senate is open to bipartisan cooperation. Durbin says they will need at least 60 votes to pass important legislation, which will only be possible with help from Democrats. The city of Bloomington is proposing a reorganization of its economic and community development department, splitting it into two. One area would be the Department of Community Impact, the other Development Services. The Illinois Innocence Project wants to increase compensation for those who are exonerated from a wrongful criminal conviction. Currently, the state only pays an exoneree a lump sum amount based on how many years they were locked up. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. One of Donald Trump's key campaign promises was mass deportation, pledging to remove 11 million undocumented immigrants on day one. The Immigration Project is a normal-based nonprofit serving immigrant communities in downstate Illinois. On Friday, they held their fall luncheon at Illinois State University. Damian Kogan from the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights delivered the keynote address there. He told WGLT's Lauren Warnicke that dehumanizing rhetoric about immigration and deportation leads to cruel policy. The other thing that's really important to put contextually is the reason for migration. If you think about for anyone as an individual, whether the idea of leaving their home country, their family, where they're rooted in and everything else, does that sound desirable? No, right? People do it out of desperation. Oftentimes they do it because their lives are threatened. Um, Oftentimes they do it because it is very, very difficult to survive. My family um, personally immigrated from Argentina uh, when my parents were starting a family. They lived their whole lives in Buenos Aires and they left uh, with very young, a very young child my sister, uh, my older sister, uh, because they had to make a choice based on the situation at the time. I wonder if it is if it is the literal
literal idea of deportation that is harmful um, or the rhetoric or a combination of the two? Well, we know what Donald Trump is capable of. We saw it in the first term. Oftentimes when someone tells you what they're going to do, you should believe them. It's undeniable that Donald Trump feeds off rhetoric. Um, and we did see in the first term that a lot of the campaign promises or threats that he made were unable to be executed, whether because they were legal barriers or logistical barriers or anything else. There is a real concern that the second iteration of the Trump administration is going to be unhinged. Where we were seeing resistance and pushback from his own party, uh, there is real concern, and we don't know what's going to happen, of course, but there is real concern that a lot of that internal resistance from Republican legislators uh, might not exist anymore. And that includes uh, local legislators like uh, Congressman LaHood um, and many others across the, the country. We are still obviously awaiting to see what's going to happen at the House of Representatives, um, but we know that the with Republican control of the Senate and the White House, uh, there's a lot that could be done through administrative action in addition to legislatively. I wonder where this disparity in numbers, is he coupling refugees or asylum seekers into a group of undocumented immigrants? And should those two groups be treated separately? There has been an intentional conflation in the campaign rhetoric. Oftentimes people um, use an anti-immigrant rhetoric of they, quote, should do it the right way. And in this case, by their own definition and standards, they did it the right way. Really, this isn't about going against immigrants specifically. This is really about a larger and broader uh, agenda that is rooted in white supremacy. We saw we saw comments against the Puerto Rican community who are U.S. citizens. We saw comments um, against the black community from the administration the first time and the second time around. So it's very clear what the agenda is. And those conflations are intentional to be able to pull to, to be able to connect to that narrative of who it is that is deserving to, to be here. Um, and it really is rooted in the notions of white supremacy and white people being most deserving uh, and then everyone else um, getting the finger pointed at. That was Damian Kogan of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrants and Refugee Rights, speaking with WGLT's Lauren Warnicky. You can read or listen to the rest of their conversation at WGLT.org. Before we let you go, today is Veterans Day. And as a result, tonight's regular Bloomington City Council meeting will happen tomorrow at 6 at the Government Center. That's it for today. I'm Ryan Denham. The show is produced by Rosalie Truback. You can subscribe to The Leadoff on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.